Hello, this is a tutorial about basic physics features in Omniverse Create. The best way to get started with physics in Omniverse Create is uh, on this physics toolbar, select the automatic creation of colliders. Now, when you create a new thing in uh, the um, create menu, like uh, let's say sphere, it will automatically say it created a static collider for it. Now, the reason that I also have this uh, maroon uh, highlighting is because here under the I menu, under colliders, I have it set to show the colliders of selected objects. By default, this is set to none, and then you don't see anything here, but uh, it's actually a really convenient feature to know what kind of colliders you have assigned, and I always recommend that people leave this unselected. Doing it for everything uh, is possible, but for heavyweight scenes that might eat into your frame rate a little bit too much because it's of course costly to draw all of those lines for the highlight. So uh, I recommend you leave it at selected. So that means that it will only show up when you select the object. Um, let's create another static object. Let, we can create like a big cube over here. We can uh, size the cube to be um, bigger and uh, move it here under our sphere. Um, we can uh, then maybe also create, let's see, uh, you can also create these implicit uh, objects. The difference is that they're not going to be um, tessellated into triangles, meaning they are using less memory. So you can see I created a sphere from the uh, sphere menu and this sphere is really literally just an implicit sphere as opposed to this sphere which is a bunch of triangles so uh, both of them can have physics but uh, it's um, good to be aware of that subtle difference I'm also going to create a torus the torus is only available as a mesh so now all of these objects are uh, static meaning that if I press this play button which is what normally starts the physics simulation nothing is going to happen um, so I can stop it again. To make something be dynamic, let's say we want to make this sphere be a dynamic object and drop into this torus, which right now it does not because it's static, all I have to do is press this uh, button to set it as a dynamic collider. So now if I press simulate, it will actually drop in here. I can also push and hold the shift button on my keyboard and uh, left drag and drag it out of that pit and have it uh, roll around and eventually roll off my uh, my box. Now I lost it, right? But fortunately, when I press stop, it will reset to its state where it started from when I press simulate, unless I have made some preferences changes. So that's already the basics of how you can uh, set up objects with either static or dynamic physics behavior and have them collide with each other. It's maybe worth noting that so far we have really just created these primitive meshes without any kind of hierarchy, but uh, typically um, you have assets in the real world that are multi-part and are made out of multiple meshes. And you don't want each of those meshes to have its own uh, rigid body, meaning that all of the parts of your object are going to just uh, fall apart. You want them to move together as a kind of entire rigid sub-hierarchy. So let's see how we can create something like that. So the basis of multi-part objects is to create an X-form right here. So Let's uh, create an X-form that creates this X-form object here under my world. And uh, I can now move this around and I can uh, put meshes under it. So to immediately create a mesh under this X-form, what you can do is just uh, right click to get that same create menu. And uh, let's say we want to have a box. Um, okay, this, this should have gotten parented here. You can also drag and drop reparent. Let me try to then also create a second shape, like, uh, let's say, a cone. Right, now now I did it correctly. It got parented under the X form. I'm going to move it on top of this so it looks like a little hat. Um, and you can see it's it's creating those uh, those maroon highlight colliders for all of these things. So if you just want static colliders, this is all fine. But I actually want to make this thing dynamic. Let's move it up a little bit again so it's not intersecting other things. Um, if I just um, click uh, to select this cube right now and I uh, make it to be a dynamic collider, 
you will see it's only this part that gets made into a dynamic collider and the, the little cap, the little hat for it got left behind. So that's no good. I'm going to make it back into static to undo what I just did. So the correct thing is, of course, to select uh, the whole thing over here, the X form, and make that entire uh, hierarchy be a dynamic. Now you can see also the hat gets uh, made green, and now the whole thing moves together. This is what we wanted. Now, uh, the only problem with this, and uh, let me put this back to static, is that there is no way to select that entire hierarchy um, here in the viewport because um, if I select either part, it's just selecting that submesh. So how do you fix that? The thing is, is that you have to first, when you create the X form, you need to um, probably select it manually or you can just do it right after you created it. Um, and then you can go down here and this is the kind field. This is a standard USD field. It's not related to physics and it's by default. It's not set to anything, but you can set it to one of these things. I usually use component. There isn't really a clear semantic difference uh, currently what, what these different things mean that I'm aware of. Um, and now if you've set it to component by default in this, in this model selection mode, suddenly when I click either part of it, it's going to select the X form. And now I can click here just to make the whole thing dynamic. So this is a good thing to be aware of. There we go. Um, if we now want the selection not to select the whole thing, but just to select the parts, you can click here and go to prim selection mode that shows it's just one part that you want to select. And now we can again select the sub parts, but there is this highlight showing that it's actually uh, part of a group. So um, another kind of selection mode is up here. It's called the rigid body selection mode. And now that we have this um, whole group set up as a rigid body, um, even if I'm normally inside the prim selection mode, I can kind of override that and go into the rigid body selection mode that makes the prim icon disappear to avoid any kind of confusion. And now I click here and it again selects the whole thing. It's a different colored highlight now. And uh, this means that this entire thing that I selected has a rigid body. Uh, that's probably it for the most basic uh, physics uh, simulation um, ideas that you need to be aware of. And uh, already knowing these things, you will already be able to set up some, uh, some uh, interesting simulations in Omniverse. Thank you.